Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living in return with having. In order to do this, we have to have an operation, not at all. In order to do this, we have to have food, and that is all. You see, it doesn't really matter whether or not we have a home or not today, or at least that's what a lot of people think. They think it doesn't matter whether I have a shelter today because I can sleep outside and be safe. Isn't that right? I mean, after all, that's what we do, right? When we lose our home because of a time of COVID or because of a downturn in the economy or because we run out of money or because someone steals it from us. You see, there's lots of reasons that there's homelessness. Most of the homeless want to stay homeless is what you can see based on the people that panhandle and sit on the street. Now, it's also very possible that they've been playing with you and that they have a home or two. But for someone who is truthfully homeless, they're typically carrying their blankets. They're typically carrying a few bags, and they might even have a shopping cart, or they could have a rollator, or they could have a marvelous cart with wheels. In my case, I used to have a very manly cooler, but when I was on campus, someone decided to break off my wheels. Just like when I was in a Noblesville area and Fisher's area in my own state, and the police broke my wheels. You see, God sees everything. God sees everyone. And what's amazing is just what happened to me over the last 30 minutes. You see, I've been sort of working on a portfolio so that whoever wants to look me over can pick a title and hear something from me. It doesn't have to be perfect, and it doesn't have to be marvelous, because I might be on satellite radio, not some typical channel. I might get a newscaster's position, possibly. But who knows? You see, I am technically and officially a university degree journalist, unless, of course, some bastard in the law enforcement sheriff's office decided to ruin my records in Indiana University. Now, a Indiana University graduate usually has some clout, but there's always people who like to fuss about. What I'm talking about today is not being clever. What I'm not talking about today is some endeavor. What I am talking about is what happens to me, and that is basically a columnist, an opinionist, a satirist, an ironist. Can you keep up? I'm not sure. So basically, I'm getting up, and God's saying it's time to go, because God always knows the souls of people he knows who is in his house or who has a care for people. So he tells me to get up, and I'm basically sort of hungry, and I haven't made a lot of money today because I'm focused on my job hunt. And when you focus on a job hunt, whether you're in a library, at a borrowed office, or in your home, or even marvelously outside enjoying the beautiful weather of summer, there is the problem that you're not at a space or in a place to build income to buy food. Now, if that's true, marvelous. If you've got a wallet full of money, super. But if you don't, it can be a little bit challenging. But anyway, God tells me to get up. So I start to walk, and I'm walking with one of my new attempts at signage, and all of a sudden, a gentle person or gentle lady, I really kind of honestly could not tell, basically said, come here, bud. And so the Lord said, it's okay to go. So I walked over, and he handed me $3. And with that $3, I decided I wanted a hamburger. And so what I decided to do was to go to a place that I had not been to in months because I do not believe in over-exaggerating relationships anywhere when you're dealing with, well, possibly not smelling great because it's so freaking hot outside and I might be sweaty from being smelly or sweaty. Did I say that right? I might be smelly from being sweaty. Anyway, the point is I walk up to the window where I normally buy and I just checked with the lovely black girl in the window and said, Hey, is the facility open? Because by and by it has not been open. And she said, Yes. So I was like, Okay, so now i got to move my pack all the way around to the other side. And by the time I get there, lo and behold, shocker, the white supremacist supervisor who I've dealt with before, who's been rude and pissed all over me before, was there. Now, I knew that by the truck, but I thought I'd give him another try. I thought I'd give him another chance. I thought maybe he just had a bad day that day, or maybe he was just having a power trip that day. So he's at the door, literally opening the door for me and saying, come in, sir. So then I go and I stand kind of a distance from the counter, which is normally a communication to any employee of a fast food restaurant that the person is still deciding when they're looking at the menu. It's not rocket science. It's body language 101. And because I'm on a budget and because I don't want to necessarily spend everything and because I'm not starving but I do need a little bit of protein, I'm looking at the menu to see what can I buy in the largest size for my $3.
and that's when I'm checking out. I'm looking at the value menu, I'm looking at the regular menu, and it takes me a few minutes because I don't have my glasses, and my glasses aren't going to help me off that menu because they're up close reading glasses. The point is, I still need time to focus, I still need time to read, and so I'm, a girl said to me as she came over, I'll help you in just in a few minutes, and I thought it was kind because she's greeting me, she's telling me she's in the middle of something, she's also acknowledging that I'm still in the middle of something, and it was great. She was a, a cute little girl with uh, a black girl with curly hair. And I only say that because I think demographical information is really important to story. We have to be willing to talk about God's glory and his diversity and who is really good for us and who is wrong for us. So anyway, I um, am standing there looking and I hear, look at this bozo or something like this, this clown I believe it was said about me by the two white men who had been at the door. They were obviously two people who were some sort of supervisor based on their clothing for that Wendy's shop. And basically, I overheard that as I was looking. And then one, rudely, with no expression, no welcoming, no nothing, said, may I help you? And I said, no, not right now, I'm still reading the menu. But after that little experience, I said, you know what? My hard-earned dollars that were gifted to me by a very generous something do not need to be spent here. And I left. There was other people also still waiting for their food, and I didn't want to interrupt that. And that would be the other thing that why I didn't address the rudeness of a man who should be showing hospitality to someone who is a guest in a store, but more importantly, who is in a military uniform. Now, when I made myself across the street, I came all the way across back to my Dollar Tree where I tend to buy breakfast, and I said, okay, I'll suffer through a little bit of late lunch, or dinner as I like to call it, and I purchased some things. But while I'm obviously in the line, the girl offers me the help that she thought I was alluding to when we had a conversation earlier. And basically, I didn't need that help, and she said, if you'd like to get a phone more things, I'll pay for it for you. And I said, no, not today, but I do appreciate that you'd help me, and I'm glad to know you'll do that. But I didn't say anything other than that, because the ladies at the store do know my situation to a point. I don't make a big stink. I don't tell them a lot of story. We talk more about the quackers, which everybody knows by now are geese, that I help to feed when I do have a little extra cash. Because I am pagan, and it is my responsibility when the geese track me down on a daily basis to feed them. They literally do that. I'll be sitting there in the middle of nowhere in front of the Target just getting out of the heat from the summer's day. I'll be sitting in the beautiful shade of a tree at the very back of the lot, not in any driveway, not in any place that I can get run over. And all lo and behold, here comes my little family of 12. And I'm like, I don't know where they come from, but they're ninjas, I swear, because they weren't there a few minutes ago. And they weren't following me because I know when they do that. But it's sort of funny to me that animals recognize people and people don't recognize people. And I could sit here all day long. And you know what happened? What happened next after I came outside the store and started to eat my dinner was basically a Salvation Army van came down the street. And I thought that was sort of interesting to me. Now that Salvation Army is allegedly closed in terms of its actual shop and whatnot. But what I'm looking for at this point is something unique about that space. And that Salvation Army truck had a license plate 27193CV. And that might be important to someone who's from the Salvation Army to know who is driving today. But he drove down the street. I made eye contact. I made a note of the plate just because I like to do that because it helps me know if it's legit or not. If it's just somebody who bought that vehicle. And then lo and behold, the guy turns around, I guess, and comes back and serves the little girl who's panhandling on the ground. And I'm like, okay, that's good. Obviously, he's a man. He's going to treat the, treat the ladies first. That's fine. And maybe she needs more help than other people. Great. And then I just continued eating and didn't say a word. He had not acknowledged me. He had not invited me. He had not welcomed me. He had not done anything godly that that church organization, that military history organization, would typically do when they see someone like me. And a little bit later, I noticed that the van was completely gone. So my guess is that the sweet little, not at all, panhandler woman said don't even bother with him. Or he chose not to bother. So I guess that's been my day. Now as a journalist, as an opinionist, as a satirist, and as a, well, quasi-online columnist, we used to have a blog, and I don't anymore because of a lot of reasons of cybercrime, identity theft, and lots of lack of funds to pay for it all. I have to tell you, this is what I'm talking about, what happens to homeless. So if you're a corporation, if you're a national organization, 
if you're anyone who's a manager or an HR director or a training coordinator, let me tell you, the best test of your people is always a homeless person. Because you don't know their life story, you don't know anything about them, you don't know what their situation is, you don't know what their circumstances are, you do not know what they need but openly and you don't know how much they eat or what they need to feed on and you don't know what their cash is like you don't know anything about their finances but how your people treat them makes a huge publicity statement not only in front of other employees who are learning from them as managers but also in front of the guests in the store that are observing and hearing your employees behavior